Hey, hi there. Welcome back. I'm Felix Hernandez and I will be your host for this masterclass with Affinity Photo. This is our third of four uh, lessons and if you are here for the first time, I will recommend you to go back and watch lesson one or two so you have a better idea of what we are doing here. We are going to be working in Affinity Photo with some photos I took of this uh, little guy, this little robot. Today we are working with uh, Potter. And again, before uh, jumping into creating our third image, as in the previous lessons, I'm going to show you a little video of what went into the photo production. So let's go and I will explain you uh, some details of the production while you watch the video. Well, now I'm in, in the studio. I'm just putting together a potter. You can see that the magnets comes really handy to pose, just to put him together and to pose him almost in, in any way. Just adding the top. And now here I'm using a foam. It's a grass used for making miniature scenery. It's just a foam uh, that comes with different uh, shades of green. Just making sure that it's uh, flat on the surface. Now I'm adding, turning on the lights. Again, I'm here using uh, four different lights. The backlight, the herd light, the top light, and the focus light, that is the one in the, in the right. Here you can see what of each light is making. It's really important to have a well-defined uh, silhouette you have more impact in the image that way. You can see there the hair light with the backlight. Now I'm adding the side light, the focus light. It gives shape and volume to the subject. And now the top light, the, sorry, the top light with the sub box that it's filling the, the shadows. This is a smoke machine. It's a small smoke machine. It's called the Smoke Genie. And it has some attachments to make different kind of effects. This is called practical effects because you are doing it in camera. And I just want the low fog. So I'm just adding a bunch of smoke there and just waiting until it sets between the, the grass. You consider the low fog. And there you have the final uh, three photos that I took. So just to mention that uh, I took the photos before uh, recording this video. So in the original shooting, I had these flowers in the background, but when I did the, the recording for this video, I no longer had these uh, flowers, but I mean, it's exactly the same setup, the same process. I just added these flowers in the, in the background. And you can see the first photo, it's just without any practical effects. I mean, without the fog or the smoke. The center one, the, the middle photo, it's uh, adding that fog. You can see it in the foreground and a little bit in the background. And the third photo in the right uh, is just the plate. Okay, this is going to help us to put out the rig uh, more easily in post-production. So for our, this, uh, for our third lesson, we are going to work combining these uh, three, three photos. Hope you have enjoyed that. And now we're going to take uh, these photos into Affinity to create our third image. And again, as a reminder, you can download the files, the raw photos uh, you just saw from the link below to follow along this lesson. 
So now let's go and jump into Affinity Photo. We are back again in my computer. So we have here our three files, our raw files, and I have two extra images that we are going to use uh, because we are going to do some um, overlays. First of all, let's take our three images into Affinity Photo. Um, because they are raw files, here I have one, two, and three. Because they are raw files, they are opened in the file in the developer persona. And we already went through uh, the raw developing files in lesson one and as well in lesson two. So here I'm just going to develop each one of the photos. One, two, and three. So now we have our three photos in photo persona. Okay, and I'm just going to place them in just one file. So I'm going to take this one, copy or command C and paste it here, control or command V. And the same for the other one, copy and paste. So we have here our three images and at this point I can close the other two since we are not going to use them. Great, now I'm going to organize them. So this is going to be our plate. It's just the background, so I'm going to take it down. And here we have, uh, let's call it just number one. And the second one with the fog in the ground is number two. Now, I just want the fog from this image. So I'm just going to take it to the top. I'm going to do a layer mask. And with the gradient tool, I'm going from here to about here. Okay, great. You are not seeing the number one. Let's make it enable and disable just the, the plate of the flower so you can see what we have. We just have the fog in the foreground and then we have our little robot and of course we have the plate. We cannot see it now but in a moment we will use it. So if we are okay with these two images we can just uh, put them maybe in a folder and we, we can keep them, but we, can, we could also just merge both of them, merge visible. So this takes the two photos and just put them in one, one single layer. And uh, at this point, the group, we can keep the group, but I'm just going to throw it away. So we don't have so much layers. So we have just the plate or background and our two images merge together. So now it's really easy. Again, we are going to make a layer mask with a brush painting with black over the layer mask. A soft brush, this, is, this one is okay. And I'm just going to paint over the rig to take it out. With a smaller brush here. And even we have some movement, you see, because the flowers move from one shot to the other shot. Also the lighting change a little bit. It doesn't matter because it's just out of focus and it's just texture. So you can take your time. But I'm just going to do it really, really fast. Maybe here I went too fast, so recovering with black, with white, painting with white, again a little bit with, dark, with black. Uh 
from here. I think it looks it looks okay. Uh, maybe let me see. I like this light coming from the left, this flower. So I'm going to just recover that area. And there we go. We can put them both in a folder. And this one I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to put it, name it as robot. And I'm going to save. File, save. And this is lesson three. OK, now I'm going to grab one of those extra images I told you. Here I have it. This is from an image bank. So this one, I cannot share it with you. I don't have the rights, but you can find similar images. This is just a rusty texture. What we are going to do is going to place it over the head to give more texture to our robot. So we are going to play with this overlay with the blending mode. And uh, if we want to take away everything that it's white, we can go and change it to uh, multiply. And you keep the dark values and you're taking away the lighter values. But as you can see, it's not completely white. So I'm going to leave it in normal. I'm going to make a folder. I'm going to put that image inside a folder. I'm going to call it Rust. Rust. Yeah, and inside that folder, I'm going to make a um, layer adjustment. Let's use, uh, yes, labels. And I'm going to make this white texture even lighter. So, see the difference? And because the levels are only in the folder Rust, it's just affecting the image that it's in that folder. So, we are around there. And maybe as well the gamma. Let's see how it looks. So now, I'm going to grab my texture and change it to multiply. I think I'm even going a little bit farther with the levels. Maybe, maybe there. I think it's too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. Ah, that looks nice. Yes. And we can also play with the uh, uh, mesh tool, this one here. Remember, you, we use it in the second lesson. Maybe just to put the, to give it a little bit of shape and play with the cracks. Uh, yes, this looks okay. So now I'm going to make a layer mask to the texture image and I'm going to grab my brush tool and painting with again my brush tool painting with black just to take out to hide the texture I don't want over the robot Zoom a little bit, make it smaller. There we go. Here from the leaves. And as well, you can take your time and 
I went too far. Just painting with black and white. Okay, the other thing I see is that this is, uh, is too sharp. So I'm going to grab the image and go to uh, filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Not so much, of course. Yeah, maybe there, 0.6, and apply. So it adds a lot of character to the robot. And I see the red, the rusty area, maybe too much saturated. So maybe I will do another layer adjustment. So I will go to HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Luminosity. And I'm going to take down the saturation. Maybe around there. And even maybe I'm going to add more luminosity. That's too much. There we go. I'm okay with that. Remember, everything is inside the Rust folder. Okay, our uh, texture image, our HSL, and our labels. This is the before and after. Let's save. So, great. Now we are going to take a second image to do one more overlay. And these are some, how you call them, sparks. Just making the, the image bigger. And we are also going to play with the blending mode. But uh, for this one, instead of going to multiply, we are going to the opposite. We are going to use a screen. A screen will take away the darker values and leave the lighter values. But I'm going to put it in a folder. I'm going to call Sparks. And as well, I'm going to make some level adjustments. And I'm going to make the dark darker. Could be something like that. And now let's see if we apply the screen up, ah, but not to the not to the layer adjustment, to the image. Now, screen. And let me go to the level adjustments again, because I think I went too far. I think that's okay. But now, I mean, I, I like the sparks, but maybe not in all of the image. So I'm going to grab the layer of where the image of the sparks is, and I'm going to make a layer mask. And I'm going to take again my gradient tool, and I went from here to here. And um, I think I'm going to make a second layer mask and as well the gradient tool just for the other side. Maybe there. Okay. And I see, I mean, there's no problem we have sparks over our robot, but maybe some of them are distracting. So again, I'm going to make another uh, layer mask. And now I'm painting with my brush, with black. I'm going to take away this one. 
maybe this one, and maybe some of these. I like more the rounded sparks, not so much the... No, I think there I went too far. Overall, I like it. I'm checking out if I want to give them a little bit of blur. So maybe I will do, I will select my image, go to filter, blur, uh, yes, I got some blur, not too much. I think looks better with blur, like they are glowing. But just a tiny bit. Okay, so at this point, we have a robot, we have a rust overlay, and we have these sparks. Right, so at this point, um, I think I'm just going to add a vignette and maybe, maybe doing a little bit of field blur. Uh, but for that, I'm going to take all my files. I'm going to place them in a folder that I'm going to call art. And I'm going to just merge visible. So remember, now I have uh, one image all merged together, or all the elements are merged together. But if for some reason I want to go back to my individual layers, I have them here, right? But we are going to work just with the merged image. Okay, so there are different ways to make a vignette. Uh, the easiest one is you will go to filters, uh, you have colors, and here we have vignette, right? So here I can adjust the exposure. Here the, uh, how hard or soft. We want those edges. I want something soft. The scale. And also the shape. Okay, so that's one way. The thing here is that I cannot place the center of where I want the vignette. Here is really easy because I have my the face of my robot almost in the center of the of the file of the canvas. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to cancel, and uh, because I want to have full control. So it's also really easy. I'm just going to make a new layer. I'm going to go and uh, edit, fill. I'm going to fill with black. And you guess, I'm just going to lower the opacity. This may around there. I'm going to make a layer mask. I'm going to grab my tool, my brush tool make it bigger and maybe I'm going to lower the flow and start painting over that layer just in the areas that I don't want the vignette. Smaller. The secret here is to make smooth smooth transitions. You can see the before and after. And I'm going to hmm, lower the opacity. Um, I shot these uh, photos with a really shadow depth of field. It was around in my lens 2.8 and I like the background and the foreground that it's out of focus, but we can even take it farther. So, 
I'm going to take again my two images, put them in a folder, and the same. I'm going to put here vignette, vignette, and as well, I'm going to merge visible to have a new merge layer. Let me zoom out. So now we can come here in filters, in blur, but now we are going to use this one, depth of field blur. Okay, and the first thing is you have two options. You can make it elliptical or tilt and shift. I'm going to use elliptical. So the first circle, the smaller, is like the protect area. So inside that circle, nothing is going to be blurred. And between the first circle and the second circle is transition. And uh, outside the second circle, okay, that's going to be applied the blur, the complete blur. So I want to protect this area. You can also give shape to this uh, circle. So maybe something like that. So if you want a hard transition, what you will do is to bring Sorry, to bring this, of course, I'm going to blur, so you can see a little bit. So there you have like a hard transition, right? But we don't want that. We want a soft transition. And I can place the center. And I'm not going to go too far. Just about there. And if you are okay, just hit apply. And you can see the before and after, right? Just, it's just a tiny bit. You can see it in the corners. Here. So I found it a little bit distracting. just a little bit and it's a matter a matter of taste so now we are going to we have done this in in, in the other lessons but why not let's just really quickly add some uh, one light I just want to light one eye so a new layer my brush tool and let me select a color. I think for this one I'm going to, with the orange, just to mimic the sparks. About there. But really, really saturated. Maybe this one. Close. Of course, this is too big. Smaller brush, a little bit harder. I'm going to put the flow right up and I'm going to paint here okay but this one is going to be set to overlay I'm going to do another layer brush smaller maybe around there perfect and another more another one another layer now I'm painting with white, smaller, mm. maybe around there, but maybe I'm going to change it to overlay as well. Okay, so it's like mimicking the sparks we have in the flying around him. And maybe a fourth layer, just with a bigger, with orange, with a bigger brush, but softer. Maybe just around here. And I'm going to change it to overlay, uh, soft light in this case, and I'm going to lower 
the opacity. It's just a touch of color, like glowing, a light that comes from the eye. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. Perfect. I'm going to take all these uh, uh, light effects in a folder that I'm going to call I. And I think that for this lesson, the final step will be uh, I'm going to do another layer adjustment. But now maybe I want to play with the color balance. And I think that for the shadows, you can select shadows, midtones, or the highlights. But for the shadows, I'm going to add a more bluish tone. You can see the difference just in the shadows. Maybe around there. More cyan, not so much. Well, two percent. Okay, and now for the highlights, I'm going to add yellows and reds just to give some contrast. And for the midtones, I think I'm going with also like a bluish tone. See? Yes, I like it. Okay, so I think we are going to leave it uh, like this. I think it's pretty cool. We have some nice texture, like the real texture and digital texture. We added some sparks, some uh, color grading, uh, doing some out of focus vignette. I think it was a good lesson. So great, we have created our third image and we still have one more to go for our last lesson of this uh, masterclass with Affinity Photo. So hope you have enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Adiós.